And it's going to be a really quick, really simple video on how you can create some uh, learning resources for preps. Um, a lot of the prep teachers have been asking me how to make, um, well, I'll just show you. Uh, let me just hit play on this little guy here. All right, click on the picture that starts with D. And then let's try this guy. No. Try again. Got my tiger. Try again. We'll click on the elephant. Try again. Click on the duck. Yay, great one. Click here to move on and then click on the web that starts with D. And off you go. So we'll get out of that. So basically all it is is a keynote using uh, hyperlinking or linking um, that'll allow you to go to certain slides and then come back and move forward and you can link to video and audio and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's it's basically like those old kind of flash, uh, little flash animations you used to get, uh, except you can make them yourself and they're, they're super, super simple. So you can obviously tailor this for your classroom. You can use, you know, images around your class. You can use your children, anything at all. And you can, you know, depending on what you're looking at that day, you can really quickly put together a little interactive forum. Um, and as it's a keynote, you can then export it and put it into a, a multi-touch book and you could have a multi-touch book full of these uh, little little games or the lessons. Uh, you can also export it to a PowerPoint uh, for those that don't use uh, Keynote uh, and you can do the exact same thing. So I'm just going to kind of show you how you do this. Um, so it's very, 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 very easy. So let me just go into a new one here and I'm just going to do a new blank presentation. Uh, I'm going to delete these two guys and type in my text. So this could be anything. I'll just follow what I've got there. Click on the picture, I don't know why I'm singing, uh, that starts with D. Um, I'm just going to pop that, make that a little bit bigger. All right, and away we go. And now let's find our pictures. So another tip I'll show you if we swing across here. Now I've obviously got some pictures, but um, if you go into Google and let's say I want to find a duck, let me Google that. Uh, I go to images. Again, this is one that you probably all know, but it's handy to have. Uh, in your search tools, if you change this guy's usage rights uh, to labeled for reuse, it basically means that any image that you find is Creative Commons or uh, copyright free. So you can use it in your document, but then, of course, then you can get your um, activities or games that you make, publish them, put them online, put them on iTunes, share them around, uh, and you won't have any copyright concerns. So, you know, I think taking that extra second, that extra step uh, to begin with it will. Uh, pay off in the long run. Or of course you can, you know, make your own images. But let's just grab this little guy. Alright, what a lovely duck. Uh, and I'm just going to download that image. Alright, and then a simple matter of drag and drop. So I'll drag him in here. It's quite big, so I'll just shrink that down. And I can kind of make it look a little bit nicer here. Put that over there. Alright, there's my duck. Uh, and then, quick copy and paste job. We now have two ducks. Paste. We now have four ducks. All right, and then we'll just get our other images. So, same deal. We can go back here. If I go elephant. Oops. Just go back here. Elephant. Again, it'll just keep using that label for reuse. That's a good-looking elephant. Um, and we'll download that. I don't really know what a good-looking elephant looks like, but. Anyway, and there we go. And then you'll see I've got the elephants downloaded here. And then to quickly just change these, so you don't want to really keep changing this, this kind of style you've got here, click on the image. In image, you can just see you've got this replace. So I'll click replace. It'll go to those downloads. There's my elephant. If I double click, I can you know move that guy around in there, but I'm happy with that there. Um, I'll just grab really quickly. I'll replace these with the other guys. There's my cat. And I'll replace this with, what else did I have? Hey, a tiger. And there you go. There is your first question. And now you want to make the uh, next two slides for if they got it correct or if they didn't get it correct. So easy, we add a slide, blank slide, and we can add a text box and say, you know, yay, you're awesome. Um, yay, you are awesome. And I should probably spell awesome, right? Um, That is correct. And we can add a little image in there. I've got a little emoji. I'm going to plunk it in. All right, I'll show you another cool little tip here as well, just because, you know, that's what I do. Um, if I had, let's just put some background behind here so you can see what I'm talking about. I've just put an image in. Um, I'm just going to bring that to the front. And you can see this image has a like a white background. Um, but, you know, if these slides were, were, were grey, we want to make them a little bit nicer. You have to get rid of that white really easily. Uh, if you go into the array, into image here, sorry, 
and instant alpha and whatever I think if I can go and get rid of that and now that white's gone so that's kind of fun uh, for me anyway there we go there is our correct guy all right and we'll make one for uh, if you got it uh, wrong so it's gonna make it a bit bigger it's uh, there we go and we'll make another slide and we'll say so close go back and try again and we'll put that one there and we'll get our sad emoji all right, and we've got our two slides here. Okay, now what you want to do then is obviously have some buttons here so you can go back and I'll explain how they'll work in a second. So with this one, they've got it wrong. So we need to say, go back and try again. And we can kind of make that look like a button. Um, if I go into the style, I'll click that guy. There we go. And we also want to have something similar. So I'll just copy and paste that. So. Copy and paste is your friend always. Great. Let's move on. Okay. And you're ready to go. So now what we do is we make links on these images. Okay, so really, really simple. So obviously the D is the correct one. If I right click that and do add link, it'll give me these options to where you want to go. So I'm going to say I want you to go to a slide. And I click on that. And slide two is the correct slide. So I'm going to say go to slide two. Now these guys are all obviously incorrect, so I can do all this at once actually too. If I just select them all, and I right click any, and do add link, we're gonna go to slide three, which is incorrect. Okay, so go to slide three, and we're done. Now, this is the correct one, so let's move on. That'll go to our next slide, or our next you know set of questions. So I can duplicate this, I can put that at the end there, and this would then be, you know, P and so on and so forth. So let's move on, right click, Add a link. And we're going to go to another slide, and we're going to go to slide four, and off we go. And this guy here, come back and try again. So we'll add that link, and this will go back to slide one. And we're done. Simple as that. So the next thing you need to do, uh, probably the most important thing for this to work, is in your document, you change your presentation type from normal to link playing. So if it was on normal, it would be like a normal keynote. So uh, you would go between slides, which would make sense. So with links only, it only works as a link playing document. So if I play this guy, click on the picture that starts with D, I'll try my elephant, and too bad. And I can go back here, try again. This one, go back, try again. Cat, go back, try again. Duck, yay, I'm awesome. And this will uh, this will go to the next slide, which is this one here. And it's as simple as that. So I'm going to get out of that. Um, and we're done. And so from there, you can basically save this as a Keynote, or you can also export it. So if I wanted to export it as a PowerPoint, for instance, say someone hasn't got Keynote, you can export it as a PowerPoint, which is really, really easy. So you just do export as PowerPoint. Uh, and when you do export to the PowerPoint, just make sure you pick the second option, okay? And that'll make another links uh, playing um, PowerPoint to share. Um, that's it. The other thing you can do with these guys, which is probably handy, is you can use them, obviously, standalone. You could use them on the Prometheum you know, interactive whiteboards that kids can go up and they can press on the buttons if they're using the pointer or the stick, um, which is really, really cool. Or you can, so I'm just going to save this guy as a keynote. All right, and then we'll open up my other favorite program, iBooks Author, and I'll just do a quick blank book here. And what we could do is put together a book of, um, of these kind of keynotes as a widget. So I'm just going to add that as a keynote here. Okay, and you can drag and drop it in, or you can simply just drag your keynote in here. It'll load that up, and then we'll have that in here. All right, and then we've got our keynote in here. So we can get rid of all of these kind of borders and all that kind of stuff. So if I go into my layout, I'm going to get rid of all that. Okay, and then our keynote will be playing in our book. So we can have a whole bunch of pages with a whole bunch of these keynotes. So if I kind of Preview that. Put it on here. There's our book. There's a multi-touch book. The kids can slide between the pages, obviously. Click so play, <clears throat> and it'll open up that keynote, and it'll work exactly like it does in keynote. And that's it. Real simple, real quick, real easy, and uh, I've got to go to yard duty. So.